No, in fact, uh, there has been quite a number of good scientists who are who know I mean see you see through this pol polemics and politics. Uh, for example, last year I mean or maybe two years back there was a f very very good and strong article in American Scientist uh, Journal, and about twenty scientists actually wrote that why it is so difficult to show experimentally uh, that GM crops are are harmful to health or whatever because number one reason is that. You cannot, I mean, if you're a scientist and if you want to make any kind of analysis or make an experiment with this kind of GM food and its health effect and so on, first of all, you will not get the permission because it's proprietary. So once you submit this, you, know, you cannot buy the seeds because the condition is that you have to declare that you cannot conduct this kind of research. So once you express your intention that you want to conduct a research about its health effect, they will not sell you and they will not allow you to conduct any such experimenting using their proprietary seeds. And if you somehow procure these seeds without buying from them and without signing this agreement, they will sue you for violation of this patenting. This is the number one reason. Number two reason is that even if you come to an agreement that yes, you, are, you will you know, share with this fact, then they say that you cannot publish the data until the company approves of the results that you have produced. So the result is that, I mean, of this both, that that 90% of the ill effects, I mean, of the results that show ill effects will never see the light of the day because the company doesn't allow publication of those things. And you cannot, you cannot, you know, violate that one because you are bound by the, by the signed contract and uh, violation of which will, will lead you to imprisonment and huge kind of you know, uh, monetary uh, penalty. So that actually prohibits all kinds of scientific research. So in protest of that, a group of scientists you know, wrote this, uh, this article in Scientific American. I can send you the link also to that, to that article. Okay, very good. And that clearly shows why Monsanto or Syngenta does not allow this to happen so that nobody can say that yes there has been research and there has been a documented evidence that there was harm because you cannot do it mm. you cannot publish it cotton is a different thing because it's so uh, cotton is in a very small scale uh, cultivation in terms of geographical area and uh, uh, it cannot cross pollinate the other ones because virtually in Andhra Pradesh there is no uh, you know indigenous variety of cotton uh, available any longer in majority of Andhra Pradesh today because of this, you know, the uh, continuous sale of Bt cotton. But in the case of rice and other vegetables, uh, which are mostly open pollinated, not rice, but other open pollinated crops particularly, there is always, uh, always the scope of contaminating all the indigenous crops, crop species and varieties. And of course, the, dis uh, the uh, dis uh, solu dissolution of the genetic wealth of the country uh, because of this, you know, genetic wealth. So, there is there is really a cause of concern for everyone, including the farmers. But that's uh, that's going on, and the and the government is completely ignorant. Rather, our especially our agriculture minister, uh, Sharad Power, has already said that no, we cannot stop this kind of uh, GM crops cultivation and trials because they are vital to our food security. Now it's very difficult to argue with this kind of complete, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, ignorant people. They're completely boastful ignoramus, to borrow the term of uh, Jose Ortega y Gasset. Uh, so these, I mean, unlike m many politicians in the US and Canada, Indian politicians are most, I mean, most of them, maybe 99% of them are complete ignoramus fools. And it's very difficult to argue them in with sense. Uh, because all you hear is, you know, com is their beliefs and uh, their uh, audacious comments. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it's I know, very difficult I know, but to with, with any data or any information. That's the, no, of course, in a democracy, people have the right to, you know, uh, right to differ in opinions. But in a in a sensible debate, people expect this at least, you know, the uh, kind of sense of, you know, giving importance to some kind of information and not saying opinions. Uh, I mean, I believe in God. I don't believe in God. That is not that level of thing. Uh, or God exists or God not, doesn't exist, not that kind of thing. It's, a, it's on factual data that this, this toxin is harmful or the toxin doesn't have any effect. And it is, it is easily demonstrable 
and there is ample data to prove that it kills these animals or uh, causes this kind of cancer or whatever and if people say that no no the, we don't believe in that now how can you argue with this kind of people i mean there are despite the you know what dozen papers which have been published from 2005 onwards to prove that roundup has this kind of toxic effects on uh, 15 different taxa of animals and there has been also circumstantial evidence uh, and also uh, toxicological evidence that it causes uh, Uh, stillborn children and causes birth defects uh, in women in Argentina and and uh, Brazil. Still, then, if people say and is, uh, even university people say uh, that it it has no harm at all, it is completely harmless. How can you argue with them? The the only strength of their argument is that they are they are receiving funding support from the company which manufactures it, hmm, and their whole academic career depends on this flow and the. the problem is that these are the people who have the complete control over the media they are they occupy the most powerful positions in the policy making institutions and the in the influence i mean the the positions which actually influences public opinion too and the people who are on the other side i mean i would say wrong side of the table they have no power uh, so it's actually Uh, i would write, like to quote to what uh, you know undp's human development report of 1999 uh, flatly told that when it comes to gmos uh, and the politics of gmos money talks louder than science yeah and yeah. it's so true so uh, whether, whether it is science or your factual evidence it it has no value to politics because it has it has money behind it so we are we are virtually we are opposing money so in fact uh, this is the reason uh, that i was dubbed that i was anti science anti development anti progress anti civilization because i was opposing money i was opposing capital i was opposing this you no know, pesticide business and all it, all of this and then in the process you were actually you know uh, opposing the state too because the state is sponsoring all of this and actually by uh i mean in uh, uh in empirical fact the state is run by money and run by the corporates it's actually a corporatocracy so when you are talking against corporates you are talking against the state virtually so you are also anti state so you are the enemy of the state and that's why not only me but many other people were also arrested uh, whether it is for the right of the people right of the tribal people mm-hmm. or right of the farmers to grow chemical or the right of the farmers to to avoid on and to reject gmos uh, yeah. it's actually yeah. an against a, a fight against the state yeah it's a, uh, it's an orf- unfortunate but, unfortunate development so but, anyway uh, but our concept of democracy is that the concept of democracy is that you have the right to to cast your ballot and that that ends there nothing else <laughs> yeah i know so you don't have any you don't have any machinery of calling back your representative if he fails to to support your cause Yeah, exactly. There is no machinery to educate your representative because we assume that the 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 MPs in the parliament are the know all and end all, and they are the wisest of the people. And whatever they say or don't say are the only justifiable thing in the world. And you have no, nothing to do. I, I mean, if your if your if the MP of your area or your district does not say that the you know five species of insects or uh, ten varieties of crops have be, have gone extinct because this uh, corporate uh, hegemony you have no way of you know uh, doing anything to call it call in back yeah, so some... that's our democracy